Good morning everyone. Welcome to St John's Parish Church for our service of Holy Communion on the 6th Sunday after Trinity. My name is Beverly and welcome to all of you in the church, especially if you're visiting us this morning and welcome to those joining us online as well. Our collect and readings are on page 165, page 165 when we come to that part of the service. And our service begins on page 237. Let us pray now. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write for these thy laws in our hearts with the seed's joy. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so on behalf of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And the collect for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. O God, who hast prepared for them that love thee such good things as past man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee that we Loving me above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Chinese empty resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For we know his death is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, he died for no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For him that he died, he died unto sin once, but him that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, let ye also yourselves be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. The Holy Gospel is written in the fifth chapter of Matthew, beginning at the twentieth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. <coughs> Jesus said unto his disciples, Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Cracker, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath fought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. <coughs> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of His Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of the very God, the begotten not made, being of the most substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our strength and for our salvation down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was slain man, and was crucified also for us from the conscious life. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and stood on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and Apostolic Church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. Amen. Father God, may your spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, despite restrictions easing, 
the pandemic is still affecting lots of things. I was supposed to be baptising a girl last weekend, but both her godparents came down with COVID. So I suggested we couldn't really have a baptism without any godparents, and so it's been postponed for a couple of weeks. And I really enjoy doing baptisms, whether it's a little baby, um, pre COVID, you could give them a bit of a cuddle, or whether it's a really toddler um, who can put some run around and, and splash in the font. And in today's epistle, Paul's writing to the Romans about baptism. And he says that when we're baptized into Jesus Christ, that we are baptized into his death. That is, in some way, we share in Jesus' death. And our baptism is a picture of us dying to sin and being baptized into death. And this means that in the same way that Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Paul's saying that if we share in Jesus' death through our baptism, then we'll also share in Jesus' resurrection as we're born into a new life. Our old time selves die, so our new selves no longer serve sin. If you're, if you're dead to something, it means it no longer affects you. Sometimes, when someone's really sound asleep, we say, oh, they're dead to the world, and uh, they just don't hear or see anything that's going on. Paul saying that we're now dead to sin. It can no longer affect us. Of course, we're human and we, we do still sin, but Paul wants us to see ourselves as being dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus. It's a bit like someone who wants to get into running. Often in the new year, a lot of people have a new year's resolution to get fit, or they decide to do um, the Couch to 5K program that builds you up running over a few weeks. And they decide to run three times a week. And if they say, I'm a person who, well, sometimes I run a few times a week, well, it, it may or may not happen. But if they see themselves as a runner and say, I'm a runner, then they might miss a training session here or there, but they're reminding themselves of their identity as a runner and that they can choose to keep training. When we realise, as Paul says, that we're alive to God through Jesus, then we can choose not to sin, although I'm not saying it's always easy, and sin no longer has a hold over us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think on these things, open our hearts and minds to hear your words to us. Amen. <coughs> Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth, where the rust and moth doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Let's thank God for the offering. Father, we'll thank you for the gifts that will be given this morning and for those given by other means. Use them for the relief of need and for the growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here and now. 
Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. <coughs> and we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. <coughs> Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. And make your humble confession to Almighty God, saying together with me, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and dwell well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time have accused and committed by thought, word, and deed against my divine majesty. Provoking most just as thy rod and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our sins. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, but the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, and have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son and Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who give us all this to pass. And grant that we may ever grant us to serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this side table by the word of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, the gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. That our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and that our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell with him and he in us. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God and Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who made there, by his oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel did command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son and Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. <coughs>
God's own Savior Christ have commanded and taught us in our Lord and Savior. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day in our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Amen. Mm-hmm. 